the uh, change in the uh, perturbation velocity potential with respect to the eta space which is equal to the uh, similar perturbation velocity potential u eh, which is uh, which is for incompressible flow right so hence the equation 49 that we have already obtained earlier can be written as this eh, the linearized uh, pressure uh, coefficient which is equal to 1 over beta uh, times uh, in bracket minus 2 u is the perturbation velocity over the free stream velocity eh, which is now we did we know it as equation 50 all right so from equation 32 again eh, the expression here minus 2 velocity potential over free stream velocity is simply the linearized pressure coefficient eh, for incompressible flow so denote this incompressible pressure coefficient cp naught so we we want to call this as the cp naught okay? hence equation 50 here is then can be written as cp uh, the linear uh, pressure coefficient equal to the uh, incompressible pressure coefficient cp naught over beta so we just translate that replace it as cp naught and and we we get this expression or we can also recall that the beta itself equal to the square root of 1 minus free stream mark, mark number squared. So we have a new expression here, equation 51. We replace the beta in equation 50 as the one that we have already found earlier, right? So we have uh, Cp equal to Cp naught over the square root of 1 minus mark number free stream squared. All right that equation equation 51 which is we call it as the fundamental glauert rule okay? so it states that if we know the incompressible pressure distribution over an airfoil so then the compressible pressure distribution over the same airfoil can be obtained from equation 51 and therefore this equation 51 is truly a compressible correction to the incompressible data so basically this is what we want to use to correct the uh, incompressible data so to continue we want to consider the lift and moment coefficients eh, for the airfoil eh, for an inviscid flow the aerodynamic lift and moment on a body eh, cl and cm are simply integrals of the pressure distribution of the body. Yeah, since equation 51 that we already obtained for pranental glauert yeah, so relates the compressible as well as the incompressible pressure coefficient, right? So the same relation must therefore hold for the lift coefficient CL as well as the uh, moment coefficient CM, right? So you just... Uh, uh, have it as CL naught and also CM naught for equation 52 as well as 53 respectively. All right. Now let us look at uh, one example eh, so that we can really appreciate what's going on. So at a given point on uh, the surface of an airfoil, the pressure coefficient is given, uh, the CP eh, is given as minus 0.3 at a very low speeds. So if the free stream mark number is 0 0.6, you need to calculate the pressure, the linearized pressure coefficient at this particular point. So you just uh, take up uh, equation 51. So we know Cp equal to Cp over 1 minus mark number. Eh? So we have the mark number value 0 0.6. We have the Cp not value at that particular given point. Right, so then you then solve this equation to get the linearized pressure coefficient, which is equal to negative zero point three seven five. All right, so to simplify to simplify things, that's where uh, Pranatal Glauert compressibility correction uh, come into 
into uh, the picture. Right. Uh, the next example given here, e example 5.2, right? So the theoretical leaf coefficient eh, for a thin symmet symmetrical airfoil, the CL, eh, in an incompressible flow is given as CL equal to pi alpha. Eh? You have to calculate the leaf coefficient for free stream Mach number of 0 0.7. Right, so this is the limit. Eh? So from equation 52, we know that CL equal to CL naught, okay, where CL naught equal to 2 pi alpha, eh? and then we also know the free stream Mach number is 0 0.7. So you solve the, the problem here, uh, the, these uh, numbers, you will get the uh, leaf coefficient. Um, equal to 8.8 .8 alpha right so the if note that the effect of compressibility at mark 0.6 is 0.7 is to increase the leaf slope by the ratio of 8.8 .8 over 2 pi which is equal to 1.4 or roughly by 40 percent right now, um, that is about the pradental glowed compressibility correction. So we have two uh, example over there. Probably uh, in your tutorial, you can uh, go through with Dr. Hugh to look at other uh, examples uh, or other questions. Eh? Um, now we want to go into the next uh, subtopic, which is the improved compressibility corrections. Okay. Okay, um, the importance of accurate compressibility corrections uh, reach new highs during the rapid increase in airplane, airplane speed. So you imagine from World War One, World War II, the, the development of new aircraft. So uh, aircraft are being built so that it can move faster. Of course, during war, you do not want your aircraft to move very slow, but in order for you to reach certain speed, especially at the uh, supersonic uh, and above. So you need to ensure that uh, the aspect of aerodynamics are being taken care, right? So efforts were made to improve upon the pranental glowed rule, right? So basically, the pranental glowed rule that we have already discussed uh, in the previous subtopic, okay, 5.4, so it has been improved until today. Eh? So several of the more popular uh, formulas are given here. So we are not going to go through the uh, theory to derive uh, what we call it as the Kaman Sien rule, all right, as well as the Lighton's uh, rules. Eh? So there are two correction um, improvement on the earlier pranental Glauert uh, rule um, that has been proposed by the researchers over here. So we have uh, a different expression for the uh, linearized pressure coefficient according to Karman uh, Cn rules. So we name it as equation 54. And another uh, earlier, so this is a more recent uh, um, correction, uh, Lighton's rules. Eh? So, so this is what we call it as equation number 55. Right? So if we look here, eh, these compressibility corrections are then compared in figure 4. So in figure 4 over here, we have several compressibility corrections, which is compared with experimental result for a uh, type of airfall over here, NACA 4412, at an angle of attack of alpha equal to 1 degree 55, 53. Eh? So we have, this is a plot of the uh, linearized pressure coefficient, Cp, and from 0 to minus 1.8, and we have a range of Mach number free stream values of 0 to 0 0.8. So basically, this is the experimental data yeah, for, for NACA 4412 airfoil. So you can see that the, the dotted line right, is the experimental data, Right. Uh, of course, experimental data normally is uh, they are scattered, right? So they are not 
sitting on a straight line, right? So you can see that there is a there are um, uh, ups and downs eh, uh, of the, the as I said, it is scattered. Eh? So you can you can see here the earlier parental glowed um, uh, rule, right? So um, uh, we try if we use the the equation and try to put inside uh, the values of uh, free stream loss, free, free stream Mach number, as well as the linearized uh, pressure coefficient, you will get this uh, curve, eh? the the bottom uh, line curve, and then using uh, common CN rules, so you will get that uh, uh, curve, which is uh, closely related to the experiment. Some of it uh, really touching the experimental data, but but uh, Lighton is um, overshooting some, most of it, right? So you can see that using the, the tree, right? You can get an estimate of uh, values in terms of the pressure correction. Eh? So, so basically, uh, researchers um, are trying to map the uh, experimental data. This is uh, using the same NACA 4412 and using these three correlation, yeah, Pranto Glower, Carbon, Cien, and Lighton, they, they try to show that it is not um, perfectly matched, but it is uh, can be used to approximate, uh, approximate the, the situation. So note that uh, over here, the Pranto Glower rule, although the simplest to apply, which is can be seen under predicts the experimental data. You can see that uh, all of the experimental data, most of it are above uh, the, the estimation, right? Whereas the improved compressibility corrections are clearly more accurate. You can see that common as well as uh, Lighton, it is uh, in between. Eh? So you can see that all the experimental data lies in between Lighton and common scene. But for a lower mark number, right, or a lower CP, right, you can you can see that uh, you can still use uh, planted glowed a little bit. Eh? So you can there are there are there are mismatch over there. So recall that the planted glowed rule is based on linear th theory, right? So in contrast, both the Lighton and common scene rules attempt to account for some of the non-linear aspect of the of the flow so imagine that if it is at mark uh, 0 0.1 yes you can use it um, uh, if you use uh, mark number uh, higher mark number 0 0.6 0 0.7 probably best to use lighton or common cn uh, rules